Hello again, this is Mark French. I'm in the Department of Mechanical Engineering Technology at Purdue University, and this is another in a series of video clips on how to use MathCAD. This one is on the, how to do symbolic calculations in MathCAD. Now, if you're a little light on the lingo, symbolic calculations are ones where you use letters instead of numbers. Um, here's a simple example. Here's a little expression that's just uh, two terms multiplied together. If I expand that out using this symbolic feature in MathCAD, I get a little polynomial. Now, let's say I want to factor that polynomial. I can recover the initial two expressions. That's symbolic math. Notice we weren't using numbers anywhere. We worked with letters. Uh, mathematicians all the, also call that analytical rather than numerical work. Now, what I'd like to do is show you a couple of the symbolic features in MathCAD that I and my students have found to be particularly useful. Let's start with a polynomial that's a little more difficult and a little more complicated than the one we just looked at, and maybe a little harder to solve. Okay, so there we go, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Now, if I want to find the roots of that, there's an easy way to do that symbolically. Just click on the x. Now, MathCAD will let you use more than one variable in an expression, so it makes sense that it wants to know which variable you want to use. Now, in this case, there is only one variable, so you just select one of the x's. You can select that one, or over here works fine, too. Oops, that's not going to work. There, that's better. Go to Symbolic, Variable, and just say Solve. And those are the roots. Now, notice that there, there's no equal sign here. Normally, when you're trying to solve an equation, there has to be an equal sign. When you uh, omit the equal sign, when you leave it off, MathCAD assumes that there's an equals zero on the, uh, implied, and it finds the roots. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention here is notice how there's a dotted line box around uh, my expression right now. MathCAD, for some reason, didn't uh, refresh the screen when uh, it's working on my computer, and it may not on yours. When that happens, just click View and go to Refresh, or hit Control-R. I'm going to hit Control-R, and it'll just redraw the screen for you. Now, one of the, uh, the few problems with doing this uh, symbolic calculation in this way is that this and the initial expression and the answer aren't connected with each other. I can change this up here and it doesn't change that at all. They're not connected. Now there's a way to connect them so that it refreshes automatically. That's called a live calculation. What you can do is highlight your expression and go up here. I think this might be the evaluation toolbar. And click that little box with the arrow next to it. Now the arrow is, stands for symbolic evaluation. That tells MathCAD that you want the answer but you want it in symbolic format, not numerical. And what the box does is allows you to put keywords or commands in there. These are keywords. Okay. Now I just clicked it here. It went and it went ahead and evaluated it without a keyword, so it didn't know what to do. So I'm gonna let's try this again. There. I'm gonna say uh, factor. I'm sorry, solve. and I have to give it a variable, so there's x, and there's the answer. Let me move it down here where we can see everything. Now, if I change the answer, or change the expression, it's going to change the answer automatically. Well, let's say I didn't really want a constant there. I'm just going to make a, I'm just going to solve this. Now, this is pretty straightforward. If you look at it, you might notice that two of the uh, roots are going to be zero, and the other one's going to be minus two. So there you go. And again, I can go back to what I had before. Now, if I have uh, maybe a 2 in there, it's hard to say what the answer is going to be now. It may be complicated and it may include complex numbers. Wow, there it is. That's pretty complicated. Now, it's too big to see on this screen. Um, in order to make this legible on YouTube after it compresses, I've zoomed way in. I'm at 200 percent here. Let me go back to 100 percent and you can see there's the expression. There's one, two, three roots, and there's eyes all over the place. So this is complex. Now maybe in YouTube you won't be able to resolve this, but you can try it on your own. Okay, so let's get rid of this. There's the solve command. Now one other thing we can do here, oops, that's not the one I wanted. It comes later. There's one other way to uh, implement the solve command, and that's to 
go ahead and explicitly put an equal sign there. I can say control equal and get this uh, bold equal sign there and put a zero and say solve x and there we go. Okay, now you notice that I have a minus 2 there instead of a plus 2 and I'm getting very different answers. So you can put that equal sign in there if you like. I tend to put it in because I notice I make fewer mistakes when I do. Now the next uh, command I want to tell you about is called partial fraction expansion. And partial fractions are just a way of writing down a ratio of polynomials in a way that makes them a little easier to work with. Okay, so there's a ratio of polynomials. In fact, let me move this down a little bit here. If I highlight that variable, go up here to Symbolics and say Variable, and say Convert to Partial Fraction, there's what I get. Hit Control R to refresh the screen. Oops. Hit Control R to refresh the screen. Now this expression here and this original one here are identical. This one equals this one, but the second one's just a little easier to uh, work with. And again, I can go live if I want. And so I'm going to click the uh, evaluate arrow with a little box there, and I'm going to say convert p. Oops. Let me try this again. I hit a space when I didn't want one. There we go. P a r f r a c. That's one of the. Well, let me try this again. Comma p a r f r a c. Now that's one of the keywords you're allowed to use. And x again. It needs to know which variable you want to work with. And there you go. Now you can see that's the same answer I got before. And now it's live. So that if I were to change this for some reason, make that a 2 perhaps, it would change it. I'd get a different answer. Right? Actually a little more convenient answer right there. Alrighty, so there's partial fraction expansions. Let's go back to my initial expression here. Okay, what if I want to find the derivative of that expression? Again, really easy. Just hit the x, symbolics, variable, say differentiate. Well, there you go. There's the derivative. If I want to do the integral, it's just as simple. Hit that, symbolics, variable, integrate. There's the integral of that expression. Again, sometimes you want to go live, and rather than use the uh, symbolic evaluation, there's a slightly different way to do this here. I can go up here to the Calculus toolbar, hit D, D, and I'm going to put an X there. Put my expression, whoops, my, exp my expression in there. Well, it isn't going to let me do it for some reason. Oh, I know why. I didn't copy it. I just deleted it. Sorry about that. I'll just type it back in here. I'm having a heck of a time here on a minus one. There we go. So there's that. I can now use the evaluate symbolically arrow. And there it is. Okay, so there's and I'm going to copy this now so I can just paste it in next time. And if I want to do the integral, it's just as easy. Click right there. X. And evaluate symbolically. And again, there's your answer. So this is pretty straightforward. And again, I've got a... Uh, uh, it's live, so if I change my uh, expression, the answer changes automatically. So far we've done solve, partial fraction expansion, derivatives, and integrals. One last thing I want to show you how to do is a Fourier transform. Typically we'll use a Fourier transform to convert from time domain to frequency domain. But Fourier transforms show up all over the place. They're even built into the JPEG uh, 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 file compression to make uh, images smaller. So let's try this. Let's try an expression. Let me try.
right now. Okay. Let me make it t instead of x. So there we go, e to the minus t squared. Let's say that's an expression in time. If I want to do the Fourier transform, say symbolics, transform, and Fourier. And there's the Fourier transform. Okay. Again, this isn't live. Okay, so if I make that an x, say, it doesn't change anything. Well, it's not going to change anything anyway. But if I do that, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and make this live. Go ahead up here and hit the symbolic toolbar with that little box in it. Say Fourier, comma, T. And there you go. Now let's say I want to plot this. The easiest way to do it is to go in there and say copy, insert, graph, XY plot, and I'll hit an omega here. Now if I want to do a Greek letter, one way to do it is to pick the Greek letter off the, let's see, view toolbars. I can pick the Greek letter toolbar right there. The other way to do it, I'm going to stop here for a second, is to pick a Latin letter off the keyboard, like say alpha, and hit control G. Most Latin letters have a uh, Greek analog. So down here, I can say W, control G, pick that, copy it, paste it right in there, and there you go. Now, that's not maybe the handiest uh, set of plot limits, so let's make this 10. There we go. That looks all right. Now, it might be interesting to look at this as a, a semi-log plot, so let me click there, and I'm going to go log scale on the vertical axis, hit apply. There you go. In log scale, or in a semi-log plot, that looks like a parabola. So there you go. There's symbolic math, just the beginnings of it. There are many symbolic functions. And as you work with them, you're going to find out there's all kinds of interesting things they can do.